Nigeria's Business Facilitation Act of 2022 is a significant step towards improving the ease of doing business and attracting investments. By simplifying registration procedures, enhancing investors' protection, facilitating access to finance, and establishing special economic zones. This act aims to create a conducive environment for businesses to thrive. In this conversation, we will explore the content of the act, other issues, the reports that was presented yesterday in Abuja, its potential impact on businesses and overall economy. I have the right person in the house. She's joining from our Abuja studios. She's Dr. Jumoke Oduwali. She's a special advisor to the president on the ease of doing business and investments. Office of the Vice President. It's good to have you on the program, Dr. Oduwali. Good afternoon. Well, I, I, I like to start. Yes, I, I don't not really want to take you back, but let's look at Quebec in its entirety. A lot of work you've been doing here at the Secretariat. Uh, now, before we go to dig delve deep into this report, give us updates on what's been happening around that space. I mean, your space with Quebec. Well, you know, Quebec was uh, constituted in 2016, and in the last seven years, we've worked on four primary pillars. We've worked on our regulatory intervention. We've had national action plans. We had the executive order one signed in 2017, which was codified as Business Facilitation Act 2022. So it's now legally binding, which is what we're going to talk about today. We've also had legislative interventions. We worked on the CAMA. We worked on a Credit Reporting Act. We worked on judiciary interventions. We have worked on small claims courts around the country. 13 states have small claims courts. And of course, our subnational intervention, which is a very robust uh, enterprise that we go, we've gone all around all the states on tour, but we're in partnership with the National Economic Council and the NGF and the World Bank to have a program that delivers reforms to states where businesses really reside. So that's, uh, in a nutshell, what we've done for the last six years. Strategic communication is one of our biggest pillars because we know that whatever we do, if small and medium-sized businesses are not aware of the reforms, whether it's from regulatory starting a business to NAFTA to paying taxes, trying to use automation to reduce the cost and time of doing business and to make sure that it's more transparent, websites are up to date, the costs of regulatory compliance is well known um, to all the other interventions, over 180 reforms. That's a summary. <laughs> Beautiful uh, stuff there. Now, let's now, I saw the top performers. I saw the likes of NCDMB, SON, uh, but can you take us through the criteria? How did you come up with this? A lot of work must have been put in here. So the executive order one, as I mentioned earlier, was signed in 2017. And so a year later, from 2018, we've been tracking empirically. We released our first report in 2018. And we've had uh, eight so far. Yesterday was the eighth that was released, and it's available on our website, businessmadeeasy.ng. So we released full-year reports, and we released half-year reports. This is a half-year report from January to June of 2023. It helps the ministries, departments, and agencies, the priority PEBEC ones that we work on, 53 of them, 54, um, were tracking those agencies that are business facing. So I think one, one kind of fell by the way, but 53 of them, I would say, have been consistent in submitting or in being tracked on their executive order one performance. And so they submit monthly reports to PEBEC uh, Secretariat and Servicom. This is coordinated by the Office of the Head of Service and also the SGF's office are all aware because there's a FECT directive that also goes with the report gov portal, which is you can get it, you can download the app from Apple Store or Google Play. There you can give reports, you can file complaints, you can give feedback. So that's the other side of the coin. We track their customer service, their, ser their adherence to service level agreements. And then we also track what private sector are saying about them in terms of reports and feedback. The idea is to improve transparency and efficiency of public service delivery to the private sector. So uh, we believe what gets measured gets done. We give out the half-year report so that agencies have an opportunity to ramp up if they haven't been submitting their reports. I mean, I could just show you any agency that doesn't submit their report kind of gets a red 
And so the agencies that, that submit their reports get the green, depending on the percentage and the amber. So the more consistent you are cumulatively. So like I said, this is the eighth report, and it speaks to the diligence of the public and civil servants in these 53 ministries, departments, and agencies on submitting a monthly report with a rigorous methodology that says how you're adhering to timelines. On transparency, is your website up to date? Are you picking up your phone? Uh, the phone lines, are they current? Are you, is the information on your website accurate? If you have a change, is it updated? Are you responding to your customers? So it's on customer service. It's on adherence to your own service level agreements. We don't judge them on any criteria that they themselves did not say it takes five days to get this permit. So when they submit their monthly reports to us, they have to give us the names of some of their customers, their users, as submitted under the, under the intervention. And the team then calls some of them, random checks, to say, indeed, is this information correct? And then we've had situations when they say, oh, yes, that was fantastic. And sometimes they say, no, that never happened. And then we, we adjust their, their ranking. So some agencies have been consistent and are getting better and better. We also track the agencies that are most improved. I noticed like NOTAP, uh, FIRS, some of the agencies that are most improved in this particular intervention, NERC also. Some agencies like Nigeria Local Content Development Board have been very consistent over time in adhering to their own service level agreements. So it's just a way to make sure that the public and civil service are more efficient and more transparent. And then the report gov is the opportunity for private sector to file their complaints or their, their positive affirmations and to give us that triangulation.